Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. I say for the fourth time today. I think we're on video number four. But what are we doing today? I'm just gonna show you guys first coat. So I don't often have the opportunity, the luxury to have somebody filming and I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like to coat this garage. First coat, um, you can see my brain's fizzling out because I've been talking all day, but we're gonna mix up some mud, fairly thick and just get all the corner bead and all the tape buried so that I can let it dry over the weekend, come back, sand it next week. Anyways, the first thing that you want for doing your first coat over top of tape is you actually want your mud kind of thick. So I have, you know, two thirds of a bucket. I don't want to run out and have to start mixing again partway through the video. So I'm just topping up my bucket with a little bit of mud. This is finished mud. So it's nice and easy to sand. It's not too porous, but it also scratches really easily and isn't super strong. That's why it's not under tape. All right, there we go. That'll be good for that. And we'll get this mixed up to the right consistency. And first coat is the thickest that I like my mud to be. So of, for all the stages, first coat you want your mud to be nice and thick because that way you can wipe out the bubbles easier and it doesn't shrink that much. Okay, that's sort of pumping the drill. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get the mud that's on the bottom that's a different consistency mixed up with the stuff on top so that I have an evenly distributed amount of moisture in all this mud. All right, it's looking good. It might actually be slightly on the thin side just slightly thinner than I would usually like it. The good news is I'll be able to put it on faster. The bad news is there will probably be a few more drops on the floor. But either way, we are ready to roll here. So tools of choice. I think I'm going to keep my four inch knife in my back pocket. And I want my six inch wherever I put it. Here it is. So I got 12 inch by five inch trowel. 14 inch hawk, six inch knife, all stainless steel. All right, and um, oh, I forgot to move this. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to go from, do I wanna go left to right? I don't know. <sighs> Tired. <laughs> okay, we're gonna pause for a second because Adriano and I, who's helping me film, are gonna slide this over because I like to go left to right. Okay. If my shoulder didn't hurt enough already, it will now. That's okay. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. I didn't inspect this before I jumped up on it. Oh, it's looking good. That's for my tet. That's French. Okay, so this first bit isn't gonna be too exciting because I'm gonna be blocked by this garage hardware. Well, let's try and get it out of the way so that we can film these bigger spaces that are more exciting. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is to, well, today I'm gonna start top down and I'm gonna coat everything. So this, I put some quick set on here earlier on these beads because I still had a whole bunch mixed up and I figured waste not, want not. So this is, these are actually gonna get three coats and be really nice, way too nice for a garage. Oh well. Again, it's gonna look good for my house. That one didn't apply there. Feather that edge. If you're getting something out of this video, feather that like button. Don't smash it. 
Okay, one more to get the porosity out. They're looking good. Feather that edge again. Okay, one more. All right, I'm happy with that. Got this flat joint. These are nice because they don't take a lot of mud. You can almost just wipe them flat. Feather, feather, feather. And I lift up right as I'm getting into that to leave it all nice and pretty. That is good enough. Okay, next flat joint. Let's go up from where we can reach and let's go back down and get it nice and evenly spread. All right, I'm happy with that. Feather that edge. Oh man, there is sand in there. That was disappointing. These trowels have such nice blades. I don't want them to get wrecked. Feather that one more time. And then one finish pass down the middle. That's good enough for that. Okay, what else do we need to do? Let's do this one. All right, are these planks heavy enough to support me and the mud? Probably, probably. Huh. Starting top down this one for no reason. Oh, that thing. Okay, feather. Feather. And while you're at it, if you're getting something out of these videos, again, and you're not subscribed, why not consider it? It's not gonna hurt you. Okay, so now that we have those done, the next thing I'm going to do, because I can't get to it easily once the scaffolding's moved, is I'm going to coat these corners. So, And it's gonna look really good behind this garage door. <laughs> That's good enough. Right there, wow. There we go. Let's get that top. So I love working on things like garages and like basements when I can just kind of like move fast, let go a little bit and not worry if it's like the Sistine Chapel. I kind of love this sort of stuff because I can, again, to repeat myself, just let go and work fast. All right, that's good enough. Let's carry on here. Can't wait to be out from behind this thing. And normally I would actually be coating these corners with my four inch knife, which is in my back pocket and I was too lazy to pull out of there. So these corners actually have to be done pretty well. Here's why. I'm not gonna get more than one chance per side. So I taped everything here with quick set this morning. And now it's all gotta look, these corners, I'm gonna coat them one at a time. So one side today, one side on Monday when I come back. So the side that I coat has to look good enough. It's not getting a second coat. So you gotta keep that in mind when you are taping with quick set and trying to get stuff done in one day. I'm gonna go over that one. Oh, can you even see that from there? I mean, I can barely see it <laughs> with this thing in my face. Yeah, I can see it, but Great. Like, it's not super close. No, we'll get there. I'll get some closer ones after from the other side. Ow, just scrape my arm on this thing. Super annoying. Uh. All right. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, now we gotta move this. So, pause. All right, let's get this while we're here, huh? Oh, sand in the mud. I heard that again, going over my trowel. It's not sand in the mud. It's sand that's in, embedded in the wallboard, which is super cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
You know what I'm doing. That edge, I'm feathering it. All right, so flats should be really quick. Basically, they're like, whoop, one to load, two to feather one side, two to feather the other side, and boom. So sometimes I get a little bit like that, and I can always just go over it one more time. I love that I'm like bragging about how quick it should be, and then that's the one that I have to go over again. See if I can redeem myself on this one. I just put too much mud on, kinda. Okay. Le feather. Adriano, do you know how you say feather in French? No, I don't actually. Well, me neither. <laughs> Otherwise, I would say it. All right, I'm happy with that. Now we got this guy, Le Mud. See, this is a Friday coat, you guys. I want to go skateboard, and it really is Friday. And once this is done, I can go skateboard. <laughs> uh, all right, I should have coated this one down a little bit first, but I didn't, probably because I was too busy thinking about skateboarding. But anyways, we're getting there. A little mud bracelet. Mm. La feather. Okay, we gotta figure out how to say feather in French. Nick, do you wanna Google it? How do we say feather in French? All right, I'm fussing. That's good enough. Le mud. Now oh, we're getting there. Okay, let's get the bottom of this corner bead. Could be using a wider trowel to do this, but I'm not, so it takes a bit longer. There we go. Looks great. Now we gotta move this again so I can get the tops. All right, top secret mud tip, you guys. How do you put this down when you got it fully loaded? You don't wanna put it all back into the bucket. Like so. Ta da! That's a neat trick. Man, I don't know why those guys are using power tools, but now, how do you pick it back up? Pretty simple. I mean, when you've been doing it a while, it's pretty simple. Organize that mud. Keep it tidy, kids. Okay, I have enough mud there. I'm just gonna bring it down. Le feather. Or is it lay feather? Now we're just getting complicated. I gotta slow down to make sure that you're able to catch it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, who put that there? There we go. The corner. the pokey thing right in my face. That doesn't sound good. But not as bad as that new cryptocurrency we just heard about that I can't see on my channel. 
<laughs> Let's just say it's got something to do with a rocket. <laughs> Ah, uh, kids these days. Uh, feather. Oh, blew it. Good thing this is getting another coat on Monday. I can live with that. Okay, so there's something I've been neglecting. I, there's something I've been neglecting. I haven't been cleaning my blades, so I am actually going to get this into here. Because we're... Halfway through here, we're getting close. And I wanna keep my blades and my edges clean. Guys, you gotta have good mud hygiene. So let's get this all cleaned off. So that it's nice and tidy. Any of those little crumbs, they're gonna work their way back into regular mud. And there we go. Okay, I wanna aim this little blob somewhere. Um, for the contractor's laborer to clean up. Where do you think I should aim this? Should I try and get it in the garbage can? Like a, like a civilized, nice person? Let's get it. All right. Oh! Did you get it? Yeah, 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 I nailed it. Nice. <laughs> I mean, they got it in the shop, right? You <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we can keep coding. Ah, oh, that thing's just in my way. Whatever. As my 13 year old would say. Okay, so I'm gonna go up right into, I'm actually not gonna go right up into the corner. There's a reason, because we also have this joint on the ceiling to coat. So I'm just gonna coat this like that much. And that way I'm not gonna mess up the other side as I have to coat it. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a bit here. Let's get this. Mud, I love that. Love watching that mud disappear or appear, like roll under the trowel. So sweet. Feather, the edge. Or if you wanted to say it a little faster, like good French, it would be like feather ledge. La edge. <laughs> Too busy farting around with my Fringlish, I'm gonna bail here. <laughs> okay, see, now I'm going for this corner and I am not gonna mess it up because I already did, because um, I left that other side uncoated. And we don't need to build this out wide because you're just never really gonna be able to see it very well because it's right up against the edge. So I am going to feather this out with the six inch, pardon me. What's six in French? Uh, six, le six inch. <laughs> My Fringlish. <laughs> My wife loves it. No, she doesn't. Is that inch? I don't know. Okay, I can see tape there. I'm just gonna live with it. Let's move on. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to do one of these sides. So pick a side, you guys. Just pick a side. So that we don't have to come back. Let's go into there. Uh, there we go. Clean that off. And just for funsies, I'm gonna put a little bit of mud right here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when I drink too much coffee before I film. <laughs> but I wanted to bury that little spot right there because you know, it gives me a second chance to make it really nice. Okay, before I move along here, let's do this one. Why not, huh? And it's gotta be nice enough 
for paint, so I gotta make sure that I get the porosity out of it. Beautiful. Okay. We're getting close. Man, why is there so much power washing and power tools out there? It's ruining my video. Don't they know I'm a YouTuber? It probably doesn't pick it up. I hope it doesn't pick it up. Okay. Arr. This is awkward. Oh, somebody is walking over that piece of drywall there. We have a little joint right here that we need to make sure gets mud. Okay. Oh, feather. This is so awkward. I'm trying not to. I shaved a couple days ago. I don't need to shave again today. Okay, let's get this while I'm standing here. So, yeah, I really try to minimize leg work, especially when you're coating by hand. You know, you're able to do everything that you're standing by. When you're coating with tools, you have to have a more systematic approach because, you know, you do sort of like one thing at a time. But when you're coating by hand, yeah, you're able to just like hit everything that's there, walk out of a room and call it done. So that's one of the nice things about doing uh, hand work. Okay. Feather. Boom, done. So that's a corner bead for you. It should actually be that fast. So let me show you that one more time. When you have like an optimal position to coat from, the corner bead should be even less passes. So it is load and I want a little more mud there, but I could have gotten away with it. Feather, finish, boom. That's a corner bead, it's that simple. Now, I want a little bit more mud right here because I have a butt joint. Now, this whole garage is probably gonna get painted in like a flat paint, and I'm gonna be able to get away with a lot in here, but that's looking pretty good. Anyways, where are we at here? This corner I was doing. So, honestly, um, the way I'm doing this right this second to contradict myself, I actually probably could do this whole thing faster if I started doing one thing at a time. So let's start doing that. So um, I'm gonna work down and go up. Or up and go down. God, I'm so scattered now. All right, let's start with this. Let's just stick with this. Coat. Feather, finish. So you can see the rhythm. Coat, needs a little more empty. Coat. Feather, finish. So the reason you don't wanna go over your beads a lot is because the more you go over them, the more you empty them out. You want them nice and full. So, coat. Feather. Finish. Getting that mud right into the corner there. Okay. Boom. Okay, need some more mud. Now I got a bit on my face. Ah. All right, keep that. Keep the back of your trowel nice and tidy. Keep the sides tidy-ish. 
Okay, where were we? Let's do this. So this is just an awkward um, spot for me. Like it's hard to go like this, which is why I pulled it the other way last time. But normally I like to go from the last spot that I put mud because that way you can take it farther. You can just keep going until you see the mud thin out. Whereas, oh, clean off that bead. When I start from back here and pull into my work, um, you know, you have to know how far you can pull the mud. So I know I can reach that in one pass. We got a chunk there that just emptied out my bead. So I'm gonna put a little more right there. Feather, finish. Clean off that bead. All right, so we didn't finish this top one. Okay, let's get this one done quick. No reason to hang out here all day. It's about to start raining. Not yet, but like tonight. We just had 10 days of like 20 degree weather in April, which is crazy for Vancouver. Um, and today's supposed to be the last of it. So I really wanna make sure that I get out on my board today. Okay. Uh, that's good enough. Yeah, skate. <laughs> Future Ben's gonna clean up all my mess. No, none, nothing I have done today cannot be tuned up on my finish coat on Monday. Feather. Get a little bit more into there. So this one up here, I'm totally creating a little hump, but you're never gonna be able to see it because it's just like four inches out from the bead. So, you know, usually you maybe have heard me say, um, it's easy to hide the tape, but it's hard to hide the joint. So all you have to do to hide the tape is bury it in a hump of mud. But to hide the joint requires feathering it out quite a bit. In this case, if there was any way to get a lot of light over top of this, you would be able to see the speed bump that I'm creating. But you never will, so we can live with it. More mud. I love the smell of mud, always have. Like glue and chalk. It almost kind of like paints, a little bit of paint. Yeah, a little bit of paint smell. It's a lot of similar materials in all of those things. PVA glue, polyvinyl acetate. Among some other things. I always wonder what that means, polyvinyl. That's like some sort of plasticky thing. I don't know. Not my job. I just, ow, I just hit my elbow on cabinets and put the stuff on the wall. Uh, one more. Doesn't look good for my house yet. There we go. Mm -hmm. Clean off the back of that trowel there. Gotta keep it tidy. Where are we? What do we have to do here? Hey, we're getting close. All right, so this uh, joint didn't get buried yet, so let's put a little bit of mud on it. Try not to wreck my work up there. Uh, 
So these joints aren't getting buried. And the reason is, I mentioned in another video, um, this drywall was installed with the bevel on the corner. So unfortunately, it's not getting built out enough to bury the butt joints easily. So now I have to do it by hand. Pay attention. That's okay. All right, one more butt joint right here. Yeah, that, oh, I just put my trowel right into my work. That's why I should have been doing one thing at a time instead of doing it all. Like that bad advice I gave you 15 minutes ago. messing up my work. Sometimes you just gotta know when to fold them. Okay, I can live with that. Clean off that bead. We are getting close here. I don't need this much mud on here because I think it's just this. So let's get that done real quick. So these shouldn't take too long either. The most important thing is to make sure that you can't see all that porosity in the mud, like I said, especially when going over a painted wall like this one. Totally almost belched again. Um, had to stifle that one. Ah, quick set that's scraping off in here. All right, that'll have to do. Oh, my shoelace is untied. That's not smart. Like how I put my four inch in my pocket at the beginning of this video and never used it. <laughs> Too lazy to switch. That's okay. Building out corners six inches with a six inch knife while it um, is a little more work to sand. It does a really nice job. Okay, that's good. Now let's get this. All right, that's it. Um, now I just have to jump up there and coat this little patch I got going on there. And the screws, haven't done the screws yet. Well, why don't we do these up high ones right now? Oh. So close to putting my face onto that thing again. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna just try and do the swipe. I just feel more confident doing it that way. I know it looks fancy, but I don't feel like I do as good a job. Oh, somebody didn't sink their screw enough. Look at that. What are we gonna do about that? Get the screwdriver? No. We're gonna do what you would never do if it had a nice window shining down it. Gonna build it out a little bit. There we go. Actually, that swipey was kind of fun. Ah. 
I mean, that's pretty much it. We just have these screws up here to do. But I gotta take this apart to get up there. So um, I'm gonna call that done, you guys. This is Vancouver Carpenter signing out. Um, yeah, I hope that video worked for you. Whatever it is you're getting out of this. Um, I hope it's not too weird. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Weirdest, worst outro ever. <laughs> Till the next one.